who's wrong and who's wronger. In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn breakaway. And in that corner, ignored by Millions Steve Dosh, Rinko Levi. All right, we are oh, you're all too kind. Oh, stop. it's embarrassing. Come on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wrong and Wronger, the podcast where we argue about things that have nothing to do with nothing. Just me, Steve Olivas, and him. He is lean and mean, and he insults just like an angry teen, James Breakwell, the exploding uniform, how, unicorn. How, how late were you up last night thinking of that <laughs> rhyme? I'm impressed. <laughs> I went through several renditions before I landed on that one, and uh, that's actually still in, in rough cut form, but I thought I, I would throw it out there and we'd, we'd workshop it right here. I saw you practicing something in the mirror. I didn't know it was going to be that. You're over there mumbling. I thought you were just being you, know, being you. but I guess you had a point this time. I was looking at my beard, hoping it would finally fill in. <laughs> well, James Breakwell, I, you and I, we have gone at it on many topics, and today we're going to come up with another good one, and we've got it, but I wanted to give you a compliment. And hey, by the way, not for nothing, but uh, we've razzed you, both of us have, <clears throat> about the fact that your college no longer exists. The program that I got a PhD from, it got shut down this year, and so my PhD program no longer exists. You and I have that in common right now. But does the college the PhD program goes to, does that still exist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. University of Oklahoma. Go Sooners. You got, no, you got nothing on me, man. I, my, my, my sad tale is way worse than your <laughs> sad tale. You can't out-sad me. How long did it take after you graduated for that college to finally give up the ghost? Ten years. Ten years it was in a death spiral. I'd like to think that I got out of there and I just sucked up all the knowledge and just, uh, uh, you know, a sadness settled over the school. They just had nothing left oh, to teach. They turned no. out their perfect student. And after that, you know, the, the professors lost heart, the student body <laughs> lost interest. And, and that's what did it. That or the fact that I never once donated money back. That also could have had something to do with it. Or, you know, gross financial mismanagement. Whatever. The point is, I was there and it was fine. Now it's gone. Draw your own conclusion. Are, are the buildings still there or did they just raise the whole thing in Funny effigy? Story, they are in the process of, like, the rumors are they're going to bulldoze pretty much everything. Like, it is it is amazing um, how much is going on up there. It may just be a vacant parking lot after a while. <laughs> Holy cow. It's like yeah. the Romans. They didn't just burn down Carthage. They salted the earth so nothing would ever grow there. Don't don't give them any ideas. They might try it. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the statue of me will still be up there. That'll be the only thing they leave standing. Well, they'll move it to the Philadelphia Museum of Art at some <laughs> point. <laughs> well, James Breakwell, while he was in college, he was quite a scientist. He was there to absorb all of the knowledge that he could and uh, it didn't move the needle much on the Richter scale but at one point he vomited at the top of Space Mountain just to test if it truly was a zero gravity environment. I uh, the Space Mountain is the one that's dark, right? I my my, my ro roller coaster knowledge is a bit hazy after puking in the middle of it, but uh, I have <laughs> yes, no idea yes, where the where the puke went. I did hear some screaming though at a non-screaming <laughs> part of the coaster. It should have been pretty tame at that point, but somebody was definitely very upset. Oh. I just put my head down and got out of there as quick as I could. I did not look at the pictures after. <laughs> the crowd parted like the Red Sea. Yes. I have something nice to say to you. It's something that's going to make you very, very disappointed in yourself. Uh, well, how you is that nice? I don't understand this whole concept then. You, uh, well, yeah, you, you might be incapable of shame, but <laughs> okay, last, just muscle podcast, right last week, you did not mention being pantsless. Oh. Congratulations. You have broken your streak. Oh, 10 or 15, no. however many episodes we are in, you didn't do it. I've been waiting so long. And <laughs> all it took was me like berating you constantly on an unrelated topic, and you just forgot. I forgot. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> Well, I suppose bringing it up at this point would just be moot. It, it would be. You can't. You can't reclaim it. The streak it, it is broken. Oh God! The world is safe. You have to wear pants from now on. That's the rule. That's how this works. It's not shame that I feel. It's dejection that I feel. <laughs> I, I could actually go into like a depressive episode after this podcast is over. 
And let's just be clear, you can't go back and retroactively edit the old podcast <laughs> if there's a, a random segment in the middle where you shout, I'm not wearing pants, I'm going to know. I'm going to go back and listen just to make sure the integrity of the recording is intact. And it's in John Candy's voice from Uncle Buck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, sorry. I don't mean to bring up movies. I know you're a busy guy. You don't have time to actually watch film because you got 27 kids. You got a house, a pig, a wife, I, and don't confuse those two either. Sorry about that. But yeah, all, all a lot my, going on. All my all my time is taken up by just belittling you. That's that's pretty much what I live for right here. <laughs> <laughs> all hey, right. We should, get, we should get to our topic. We we the, the the before segment has gotten longer and longer. <laughs> One day we're going to get to the end of our podcast, and we're not even going to mention the argument. We're going to get so off track. The Vanilla argue- versus chocolate, which the- is better. Okay, vanilla versus chocolate, which is better? And are we talking a specific food or just the flavors? I think ice cream. That's really the only place that flavors matter anyway. Vanilla ice cream versus chocolate ice cream. Heads on the Guam quarter of fate. Heads will be vanilla for James Breakwell, and tails will be chocolate. All right, let's do it. Coin is in the air. Eventually, these arguments will get so short, the coin toss will settle who wins. <laughs> it is tails. Guam is looking at me. You, sir, have chocolate. I dodged a bullet there. I have no idea what you're going to say about vanilla, because it is, it is the textbook definition of boring when you have something that's completely unremarkable you say well that was pretty vanilla it's the bland in middle of the road nothing good to say about a taste chocolate is is what you live for chocolate is what you drizzle on vanilla ice cream to make it taste like anything chocolate is what makes ice cream great it's it's ice cream at its full potential it's a solid mass of frozen goodness you put in your mouth that, that, that makes life worth living. Mm. What good could you possibly have to say about mm. vanilla? No. Now, now, vanilla is like O negative blood. It is the universal donor. That vanilla goes with everything. You can put something on top of vanilla to spruce it up because vanilla, will, will it will bind with the molecules of the good tasting stuff and make it better. And it's not geometric, it's exponential, the better that it gets. It's not arithmetic or geometric, it's exponential, the amount that it adds to it. Vanilla is probably the most favored scent of every male in the world. That uh, if a female sprinkles on a little vanilla scented oil or a little vanilla scented perfume it just it's just the perfect mellow sexy kind of smell when it comes wait, to wait. ice cream what what does your wife go around smelling like ice cream is that what your relationship is based on am i not supposed <laughs> to slather it all over her that <laughs> is, this, is this this is how you, you your marriage is, boy that woman sure certain smells bland and uninteresting <laughs> i'm all about that let me swoop in here i can't walk into baskin robbins without leaving a little bit aroused if you know what i'm saying <laughs> Uh, I, this took just a creepy turn there, and you did it. That was you. You did that. You did, I did. I'm just saying, I like the smell of vanilla. I like the smell of cut grass. I don't know how you're going to make that weird. You're going to make your wife smell like cut grass? I don't think anybody Listen smells like you. vanilla. Vanilla is not, you don't make yourself smell like chocolate. You, you don't make You, you know why like you don't? Because it's weird. <laughs> it's vanilla is weird. That's, that is not a thing. <laughs> and you know why you can put vanilla ice cream with anything? Because it's tasteless. Well, you're not going to find anything to taste bad with it because oh, it tastes, it like, tastes like vanilla. Like, I don't understand why people put flavored creamers in their coffee. Coffee is a flavor, and coffee is good. Vanilla ice cream by itself tastes like vanilla ice cream. It's awesome. It's the best flavor there is. It's the most popular ice cream flavor there is, and you can Google that stuff. It'll tell you right on the Internet there yeah, that I'm it's right. it's the most popular because you give it to surgery patients when they can't handle <laughs> flavor. Yeah, well, like, oh, boy, here's something you won't throw up. There, you, you won't even know you're eating. <laughs> Because it, it basically doesn't exist. You can't put a big scoop of chocolate ice cream on apple pie. It's going to compete with flavors, and it'll just make it bad. Vanilla melds. It's like a Vulcan mind meld with whatever you're eating. It doesn't meld. It hides. It ceases to exist. Like, boy, this pie is too hot for my mouth. I sure I wish I could put ice cubes on it. No ice cubes. Give me some vanilla ice cream. Basically the same thing. Chocolate ice cream. It's like, oh, I have two great flavors here going together. At least there are two distinct things there. I, vanilla I, flavor is just, it's its like on the flavor meter, it's like a sliver above non-existent. It's, it, have you ever smelled vanilla extract? I have not been around your wife, no. <laughs> that was her nickname in college. Have you ever... <laughs> I, I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, laughed, you laughed way too hard at that. I feel like I've 
I want to be a part of your life. I don't want to be in right now. Well, I'm going to close back away. I'm kind of in a box here, James. I, I got to work my way out. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 this is the problem with me only listening to 40% of what comes out of my mouth. What, what were we talking about? I, I just woke up without pants in a strange city. I, I don't know what's going on. Feel is awful. Just start there. <laughs> <laughs> the point is this vanilla extract, you don't have a chocolate extract. Chocolate scent is okay, but the vanilla scent, you put it in cookies, you put it in cakes, you put it, we're talking about ice cream, it draws you in. It just hits that pleasure center of the brain and makes it stand up and go, ooh. Chocolate is scientifically proven to make people happier. Like there, there are studies on this. There is data. You don't. People don't go. Oh my gosh! I had the worst day of my life. I need to go ha- home and have some vanilla. You go home and you have chocolate. For some people, they've done tests on their brains. It's better than sex for them. There is no correlation with vanilla. There is not well, one person on this earth who thinks vanilla is better than sex. None. Maybe at your age, James, but <laughs> zero. <laughs> Even at creepy old man Steve Alito's age, it's still zero. <laughs> I am confident of that. I actually have to give you that point. Not the creepy old guy point, but the chocolate point. But coming home, why do they give vanilla ice cream to surgery patients? Because they want something yummy. It's a little treat because your body just went through a trauma. They want to make everybody feel good. And that little blast of vanilla ice cream, that one scoop in the little cup with the wooden spoon, that little paddle, like a canoe paddle they give you to eat it with, it's fantastic. Everyone loves vanilla ice cream. It is slightly better than having your stomach cut open. You just survived that <laughs> awful thing. Here's something a little bit less awful. How Enjoy. Does your brain work. What is? Where do you come Man, up with that? Can you imagine if they gave them chocolate ice cream? Nobody would die after surgery. They'd have a reason to live. They'd jump out of bed and do the jig. <laughs> 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 this is, should we talk politics as long as we're at it? This is the raciest show that we have put out there on the interweb. Quite possibly. <coughs> and now you're I'm all so I'm puffing out the lung. I need to go have surgery myself and get some chocolate ice cream afterwards to live. And they can't get chocolate ice cream because it's too heavy. They got to give them something light and something delish, and that is what vanilla ice cream accomplishes. Vanilla ice cream. Vanilla is the basis of the greatest dessert known to mankind, creme brulee. You can't tell me that anything chocolate can hold a candle to creme brulee. I think chocolate can hold any number of candles, especially when birthday cake is involved. <laughs> Who wants a vanilla birthday cake? You I love vanilla cake. <coughs> Nobody loves vanilla cake. See, you Nobody. can't even, your body is rejecting your very premise by trying to gag you out of this conversation. I'm so disgusted by your disdain for chocolate, my body is just shutting down. You identified <laughs> you as a toxic person, and I'm out of here. <laughs> And you'll go down and have a little nip of vanilla ice cream. That's what you'll do. <laughs> Only if they're serving it in hell, which they very well might be. <laughs> you have 27 children, James. They all love vanilla ice cream. You can't tell me they don't. If I gave them a taste test and you could have vanilla or chocolate, 100% of those 27 kids would choose chocolate. Because yeah. children know. They don't, they're not coming out of surgery. They just tell you the honest truth. Kids know. Why would you doubt the wisdom of children? Because they know how dad gets when they speak the truth. <laughs> I, I built my Twitter account on them speaking the truth sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they love chocolate. Nobody's, no kid's going to go ask for a vanilla ice cream. That's not a thing children do. I can't believe you lie this way. I can't believe. I'm, I, I don't, the, nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> I mean, you, you honestly, like Neapolitan ice cream, Neapolitan ice cream, what flavor disappears first and what flavor is there last? The chocolate goes first, the strawberry goes second, and vanilla, poor lonely vanilla sits in there till the end of time. You just go and buy another Neapolitan box is what you do. Nobody eats the vanilla. Uh, see, you're talking to the wrong guy. This actually disgusts my wife that neither child nor myself prefers chocolate anything. And so in our house, if my wife doesn't eat the ice cream, the vanilla disappears first, the strawberry goes second, and the chocolate will just languish until it gets freezer burned to the point of throwing it over the back fence. I 
Are you a human? Are you one of the pot people come down? Like, <laughs> I'm not the making that up. Humanity. It's like if peeing in the shower. John Carpenter's, you know, it. He comes out, you know, he's <laughs> taking human form like, well, you are a person. Let's do the test. Chocolate ice cream? No, oh, chocolate's the worst. And then you hit it with a flamethrower. It's that definite. <laughs> I have to give you the last word because we are almost at the 15 minute mark and we got to go. Thank goodness. I cannot I cannot speak with you about this anymore. I'm not sure I'm going to invite you back into Journey 2 studio. You dragging your chocolate ilk in here. The end of the end of our podcast as we know it. This is the deal breaker. This is the lie. Oh, thank God we weren't ever friends. <laughs> it makes life so much easier. All right. Well, we got to draw this to a close and tell us what you think. Get in touch with us on Twitter. Unicorn is at Exploding Unicorn with an X. I'm at Steve Olivas with a V. Not the silent V in front like James likes to put it, but S-T-E-V-E-O-L-I-V-A-S. Unicorn is also on Facebook, spelled just the way your mama taught it, Exploding Unicorn. Until next week, and next week, man, we're going to love the topic. What is that topic again, James? Well, our podcast just ended, but if we get back oh, together, oh. which we might, <laughs> My mistake. I, have, I have no idea whatsoever what it will be. <laughs> well, tune in next week to find out if there's going to be a next week. This could be the dystopian, post-apocalyptic hell that we are living in without wrong and wronger, or maybe we'll be back. But until then, Steve Olivas for the Unicorn James Breakwell saying thanks for listening, everybody.